Hey guys, welcome to this edition of Sci-Fi Timelines. Today we're talking about the long-running Highlander series. And we're talking about the Immortals. You know there can be only one. Or five. And a TV show. And a cartoon. Okay, there can be a whole lot. Alright, here we go. The first Highlander came out in 1986 and hot damn is that opening Queen song amazing. I don't care how bad these movies can get when they start off with Freddie Mercury. So we meet Connor McLeod, who flashes back to an ancient battle, but then gets in a sword fight with some guy in a parking lot and cuts his head clean off, which causes magical explosions. We then flash back to the Scottish Highlands, where they state that the year is 1536, about 450 years earlier, and Connor is there, and so is the Kurrigan, who kills Connor, but it doesn't quite stick, as Connor is an immortal. We bounce back and forth between the 16th century and 1985, when the film was shot, and things don't go quite that well for him in either era until he meets a hot lady and Sean Connery's Juan Ramirez. So we get Christopher Lambert, a Frenchman doing a bad Scottish accent, and Sean Connery, an actual Scot, playing a character who is Egyptian, with a Spanish name. We also learn about the gathering when immortals will all fight each other and the quickening, sort of a spider sense of immortals, and the fact that the immortal can be killed by removing their head. The Kurgan shows up to demonstrate on Juan and be inappropriate with his lady. Back in the present, this paper confirms the year is 1985, and Connor found a new lady and Kurgan is here as well, killing more immortals as the gathering decrees that there can be only one. They decree that a lot, actually. Pretty soon, there are the only two immortals left and it all comes to a head. Sorry. When Kurgan kidnaps Connor's lady friend and then they fight it out. The Kurgan gets the Capitron when Connor gets the upper hand and receives the prize, which is to be mortal and to be able to have children as well as some sort of worldwide telepathy. So there's no more mortals, so there's no more room for a sequel, right? There can be only one. There's always room for a sequel because five years later in 1991 we get Highlander 2 The Quickening and right here is where I wish I didn't choose this franchise. There are about 20 different versions of this film so just know that we're basing the timeline off of the one considered the most canon by the filmmaker which is the Renegade version. It kicks off by telling us that it's now 2024 and there's a shield above the earth which this statue tells us that it's been there since 1999. Connor's at the opera, and he's aged since he's mortal now, and it's been 39 years since the last one was set, and he flashes back to a rather exotic, non-Earth-looking location, and Ramirez is still alive. If you've seen the original, it states that this is the planet Zeist, and that the immortals are aliens, but the Renegade version ignores that, and it's just a long time ago. It seems Connor and Ramirez met prior to the events of the first movie, and they have an equally immortal enemy named Katana. They're exiled into the future, where they'll have to compete, setting up the events of the first movie. Turns out that the shield is pointless and Katana is still alive and Helen, sorry, Louise, finds him but so do bird people. Connor kills them and is made young again and also somehow manages to restore Ramirez to life. Katana shows up and this guy is watching Godzilla. Oh yeah dude, try watching all 32 of them. We get a flashback to 1999 as they launched a shield and then Dr. Cox shows up but never calls Connor a girl's name so it's sad. Another flashback shows us that Brenda died due to sun poisoning, and her grave shows that as 1995, so at least they got 10 years together. Connor and Ramirez reunite and attack the shield, and Ramirez is killed by a ceiling fan. Katana kills Cox on Tondra, and Connor beheads Katana, and uses his energy to destroy the shield, and no one flies to Zeist, because it's the renegade version and Connor's mortal again, I guess. There can be only one. Even though The Quickening was a mess, three years later we get Highlander 3, which was subtitled both The Sorcerer and The Final Dimension. It completely ignores the second movie and starts off right after Connor's first wife dies and takes us to Japan, where we meet our villain Kane, who gets trapped in a cave-in, which I guess excuses them from the events of the first movie. It then cuts to 1994, and Kane and his flunkies are freed, and they've been in the cave for 400 years, but their hair and beards didn't grow at all. We then meet 1994 Connor, who has a son that he adopted after Brenda died in a crash. Connor kills the flunky, Kane apparently teleports. I mean, if he could teleport, why not teleport out of the cave? Anyway, Kane finds Connor and they fight, and Connor meets a lady friend who may be a reincarnation of a former lover. He gets so preoccupied with making a new sword and hooking up in Scotland that he completely forgets to pick up his son from the airport in America. Because what a great dad! Kane kidnaps the kid, and they finally face off in a classic 90s factory that specialized in fire and smoke. Who works in factories like these and how unsafe would that be? They fight and eventually Kane gets his head lopped off and it once again looks like Connor gets the prize and he also gets his son, the one he forgot about. 
He goes about his life, but lightning strikes his sword, signaling that his work may most likely not done. There can be only one. At this point, there was also a Highlander television series, which started in 1992 and lasted until 1998, telling the stories of Duncan MacLeod, a member of Connor's clan and also an immortal. It was decided to merge the series and films in the next installment, 2000's Highlander Endgame. It opens with a flashback to 10 years ago and Duncan and Connor are hanging out, and this is where our timeline goes all out of whack. Since Connor is aware of Duncan and the other immortals, this prologue had to have taken place after part 3. I guess shortly after the events of that film, he ditches Alex and his kid and moves back to America where his longtime confidant is killed. It then flashes back to present day, which have to make it at least 2004 or 2005, depending upon when he ditched his family. We're not even getting into the fact that Connor shows up into the pilot for the TV series in 1992 because this is enough timeline acrobatics as it is. Also, any way you slice it, this one takes place post-1999, so part two officially does not exist in its continuity either. So after a flashback to 1755, a new group of immortals try to kill Connor at a sanctuary. Duncan investigates and the big bad is revealed and it just so happens to be one of the guys from 1755. Connor's revealed to still be alive and he teams up with Duncan to figure out how to stop the villain. Kel, the evil immortal, kills his crew, and Connor forces Duncan to kill him in order to gain his strength, officially ending Christopher Lambar's real one the franchise. Duncan and Kel face off, and after some spectacular effects, Duncan proves triumphant, and he lives happily ever after with his immortal wife, who he apparently doesn't feel compelled to decapitate like all the other mortals do. There can be only one. So by this point, there had not only been a Highlander movies and a TV show, but there was also an animated series, a series of novels, and an animated film. But there was a long seven year gap between Endgame and the next film, 2007's Highlander The Source, which premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel. It kicks off by telling us about The Source, where Immortals began. Uh, it tells us it's the near future, and things look pretty crappy here. We meet this gladiator looking guy who's super fast and pulls people's heads off. Here's where we get some sort of semblance of a time frame as we're reintroduced to Joe Dawson, a minor mortal character from Endgame. It's seven years since the last film and he doesn't look substantially older, so we're maybe at most five to ten years ahead of filming, otherwise this character shouldn't have appeared to have aged like 20 years, which doesn't look right. Duncan meets the Guardian, wow, what a well shot fight scene. Sometime between the last film and this one, Kate has died and Duncan meets a new lady, Anna, and married her and they've since split. Anyway, they go in search of the source while the Guardian chases them and actually sings Queen songs from the first movie before killing them, since they lose their immortality as they get closer to the source. There's a bunch of mayhem and then they face off against the Guardian as the cosmos converge with Duncan gaining superhuman speed after some 2002 era special effects in 2007. Duncan refuses to kill the Guardian, which I guess makes him disappear, and Duncan joins Anna in the source, and she says that she's pregnant, and it ends with the worst cover of Queen of all time. I'm done with this. So there you have it, five movies of rapidly decreasing quality and continuity. Uh, how much of it actually matters in the canon is up to you. The third movie doesn't really seem to make sense in terms of the TV show and the movies that follow after it, but you can kind of fit it in there if you want to. Part 2 definitely does not exist in any form of the franchise. The fact that they're aliens is completely and totally forgotten in all forms of the, of the continuity, uh, whether it be the cartoon, the TV show, the books, the novels, everything. And there is a lot, so so much for there being only one. Well, that's it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure that you like it. Please share it on anything that you like as well, too. Give me some comments. Let me know what else you want to see on Sci-Fi Timelines. And as always, I want to thank my patrons over here. Um, you can actually support me as well on patreon.com slash movie timelines. Uh, help me out a little bit. Let's get some more of these videos made. And uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks for more videos. Thanks for watching.